Hi, I'm Cece, and I'm one of the artists who works on the Hermitcraft TCG, and today I am joined by the one and only Vintage Beef. Wow, the one and only? The one and only. <laughs> I mean, there's no other Vintage Beefs around? Probably not. I guess Beef Jerky's kind of Vintage Beef. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> never been a fan but you know no. hey it is what it is so uh, i just thought i'd bring you on today if we could just uh ans- ask you some questions about the tcg about hermitcraft and maybe some other st- fun stuff along the way yeah so i think we should start with the the most important question the one that everyone's been asking what is your favorite color oh my goodness <laughs> wow what a hard hitting hard balls <laughs> right off the gate <laughs> Right off the bat, I knew this was going to be a tough interview. Um, probably blue. I don't know if I have favorite colors per se, but always growing up, it was blue. So I'm going to go ahead and stick to the uh, the legacy color, blue. That's that's interesting because your branding is all red. I know, I know, it's weird, but um, yeah, I'm not even sure. I think the branding is red because it kind of just worked out that way when I uh, I hired somebody to make my little icon and stuff. They automatically made it red. I don't think I requested it to be mm. red, but they did. And it looked good, so I didn't even question it. Maybe I should have. Maybe it's... I should have made it blue. <laughs> it's meat colored. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it is. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so I guess going back to the start of like YouTube and stuff, it's like, why did you start making videos? What was like the catalyst for that? Um, back when I, so I've been doing it, it's going to be 13 years in April, which is a long time. Um, but 14 years ago, I would say I was watching a couple of YouTubers, one named good Boulder fist, who I'm still friends with today. The other one named Anderzel. I watched a little bit of co-star and a little bit of, uh, X plays Minecraft, not X Zuma, but mm. a different X at the time. David X something I I'm forgot the exact not familiar uh, but yeah no you wouldn't be because <laughs> they've been doing it for a very very long time long before I started and so I watched them play and um I thought you know what this looks like a lot of fun and I realized playing Minecraft in single player I don't think there was even multiplayer back when I yeah, started watching yeah um At least not so playing supported. Minecraft yeah exactly I think I think I I started up a server probably 13 or, or so years ago with my buddy it was just me and him uh, but it wasn't nearly as fun as watching people play and then sharing things that i've created and discovered so i thought you know what that'd be a lot, a lot cooler it, it's like playing multiplayer but without playing multiplayer because yeah. people are still able to see what you're doing and follow your progress and stuff so that's the the main reason i started watching was i or started uh recording and making videos was uh, i was inspired by those guys and i thought this is a great way to share my adventures. That that is, yeah, that's pretty much like the same reason I did it too. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's it turns a solo activity into something you can just share with people. Um, it's so much more fun. So, but when it comes to actually sharing with people, what was the like story of you joining Minecraft and actually being on a server with other people? Oh, um, well, once I started making videos. I was back then, I think it was pretty easy to steadily gain subscribers. Um, I yeah. mean, I want to give myself a little bit of credit. I like to think I was entertaining, oh, yeah. but I don't think it was nearly as difficult as it is today because as long as people are searching, there were so many less Minecraft content creators that yeah. they were probably going to find you at some point. So I was slowly gaining subscribers, but I kept watching Good, who was my favorite. Hmm. And then he had a, uh, he had a contest. Um, and he was going to allow two people to join the Mindcrack server. Oh. And I entered the contest. Yeah. Um, I think it was like, I don't even know if there were actual um, rules for the contest or guidelines. Mm. I created like a museum. And inside the museum, I put various things that were related, that, that related somehow to Mindcrack and Good and that season that they were playing on. And I won. And I, I won... I think also along with W92 Badge, I think oh, we were badge. both. Yeah, Badge. I remember Badge. <laughs> yeah, we were both allowed on the server at the same time. And the rest is history. That's how I got on. And it was uh, it was awesome. It was so much fun playing with the people that I had been watching for like a year. <laughs> so was the competition like a Minecraft building one or a video one? 
both. It was a video one. Video. So you would have to create a video of something, and I created a video of that museum that I built right, okay. for Good, and, and Good uh, saw it and liked it. Is that Lucky still available to watch anywhere? Uh, it probably is, actually. It, I don't know if I put it on my channel or if I sent it to him, but mm. I think it probably might be on my channel still. I have to do some digging for that. See if it'll be yeah, interesting to see. Me too. <laughs> um, so I've, I'm not as familiar with Minecraft. That was a bit before I started engaging with like YouTube stuff. But um, so it was were you in like the first season or was it like a later one or was it even seasons I, at all? I, I think I was in the second season. Second. Yeah, I think I was in the second season. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think there'd only been one season before I joined. And so when I joined, it was officially season two, but I labeled all my videos season one because it was my first season. Yeah. I probably shouldn't have done that at this point, but... No, it, it, it's one of the things that does make sense, like, from your channel's perspective, but it could be a bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our current SMP is, I think, season eight, but I'm not calling it that because, like, no one's seen the first seven. <laughs> <laughs> right exactly right you name it season eight and then all of a sudden people are like okay well we're all uh, this. <laughs> yeah but um so how long were you in Minecraft for like, what was the timeline of i that? mean technically i'm still in Minecraft. i, I never guess that's officially, true yeah yeah i never officially left the group i just don't play on the server i haven't played on the server um uh consistently i would say in the last maybe two or three years because i would still pop on now and then and i think last year I think about a year ago, I was uh, I just did some stuff with Good on the server as well, like a little mini series where mm. he was just building like a, a dock or something for his for his uh, I guess home. But yeah, I popped on and I spent a little time there with him, and we just you know joked around and chatted and stuff. So consistently, probably not for a couple, maybe two or three years. I didn't now. even know that Minecraft still had like active servers and stuff. Yeah, they do. There's um a, a, some of the Minecraft players still play on there, but it's sort of they've sort of opened it up to like patrons, and so now it's like um sort of a patron server. If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm not, but I think that's what it is now. It's sort of friends of Minecraft plus uh patrons. Hopefully, oh, I okay. get that right. I have to have a look into that. Uh, so my first interaction with Minecraft, I think, was UHC Ultra Hardcore because you guys mm -hmm. made that, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um. It's funny how that started too. So I was watching Good play. Um, uh, I believe it was something called the 404 Challenge, and all it was was there was a specific map way back in the day where you started on a little island, and as soon as you uh, put a torch or dug a piece of gravel or sand, I can't remember if it was gravel or sand. I think it was sand. It would collapse, right. and you'd go into a cave. And so the challenge was to survive in that cave for as long as possible without using torches. So you'd have to use like lava to light things up right. and um, and stuff like that. So I was watching that and um, he, he made like sort of an off uh, offhanded comment, kind of like it'd be cool if Minecraft had a, or Minecraft had a mode where you couldn't recover health. Mm. And so as soon as I heard that, I recognized that as a brilliant idea. Yeah. And I went straight to... SBK Silence, which is somebody I had been, uh, I guess he, he was a friend of mine. I've been in contact with him uh, before this, and I and and he was a mod maker. And mm -hmm. I told him I need a mod like this, and then that's how it started. He made the mod, and then I approached Good and I said, "Hey, remember that thing you said?" I don't even think he remembered. Yeah, it was a time comment. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, "Well, you you said this, and I actually had somebody make the mod. We should play." And so the first, the very first UHC was. Uh, myself, Good, Bash, and Paws going after the Ender Dragon in uh, har hardcore mode. Oh, so it wasn't even like a competitive thing. It was like a no, no, it wasn't uh, season one. And then they all died, and I survived. But we just I didn't go after the I didn't defeat the dragon by myself. So we just ended the series there where they all died. So you just got to live off <laughs> living. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then season two was the exact same thing, except I think we we all um, defeated the dragon that season i believe oh i think maybe badge might have died i can't remember it's a long yeah. it was 13 years ago Jeez. <laughs> or 12 years ago so yeah it was uh that's how it was first two seasons were actually not pvp at all it was pve i, I was aware that like uh uhc was a mind crack thing but i didn't realize it was you specifically who like pushed it i, I that's that's news to me it also, it also explains oh, yeah. why like you've 
had quite a few UHC stuff on your channel. Like, oh, I love, yeah, I love. I'm terrible at it, but <laughs> I find it's a lot of fun because UHC is where I got like started in Minecraft. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's my origin story because like there's the Reddit Ultra Hardcore, and actually we have played UHCs together. It was like probably f like because you were in the the Phobia series, right? Yes, yes, yeah. One, I think I only did one, maybe two of those. Chrono, I, I know you were in Chrono. I was looking through your channel. I saw Chronophobia, but I remember you did some like just their uh, public ones too, mm -hmm. and we definitely interacted there at one point, which I think I, I completely forgot about it until like just a few weeks ago. But I think did that's... I ever kill you? Uh, <laughs> no, I think. Or I the better question: Did you ever kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I think I fell in a hole. That's usually oh. how my games went. <laughs> I either died from go. being destroyed in a fight or falling in a hole. I still do, actually. That's kind of my go-to. <laughs> I'm actually really decent, more than decent. I would say, not to toot my own horn, but I, I would say I'm very good at surviving environment mm. in, in UHD. Yeah, the PvE like, stuff. PvE for me, I, I'm fine with. It's the PvP stuff that always gets me. I'm just yeah. not good at fighting. No, I, I, I'm kind of all round okay <laughs> everything <laughs> it's not it's not my specialty mm -hmm. but uh so the uhc's you did one with hermitcraft didn't you I, f I feel like i remember that happening at some point um i i did i don't know if it was called uhc i think it was uh called something else it was like a stream event or something wasn't it yes i've done a few stream I I've done so many UHCs. I've done a bunch of streaming UHCs with Minecraft as well. Hmm. Um, but with Hermitcraft, I can't remember exactly what it was. I, I know I did something, but I don't know if it was exactly UHC. I believe it was Teams. And I believe I was on a team with Anders, actually, is, yeah. which is an original Minecracker. But well, not original. I shouldn't say original. I actually got Anders into Minecraft. Did you? But um, yeah, I did. Uh, they were asking for suggestions, and I suggested him, and they loved him. And I still love him. He's awesome. Um, but yeah, I remember I was on his team, but I think it was a Hermitcraft labeled thing and not right. a, a Minecraft label. I just, I, yeah, it's been a long time, and I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, are, I guess we can get into now Hermitcraft. Of so, what was like you joining Hermitcraft? What was like the transition between Minecraft and Hermitcraft? So that's so Minecraft started dying down in terms of activity um we were still going strong in the back end with different games like a lot of the a lot of the minecrackers moved on to different games on their channels and they were just playing minecraft less and less and i found myself kind of abandoned on the server at times like i was the only one on um, or it would just be like two or three of us that were even putting out videos at that point and so I saw Hermitcraft, and they were much more active at the time. And I believe there was already a couple of ex Mindcrackers on Hermitcraft in season four. B Dubs was there, maybe? I'm not sure. B Dubs, and I believe Doc was also yeah, there Doc, already. Yeah, Doc, that was it. So I, I decided to ask if I could join, and they allowed me to join, thankfully. And yeah, I joined in season four. I think I joined about halfway through season four and finished off season four. And then I played for about half of season five. And then I took, I think I went back to Minecraft or something. Or or I, I know I didn't take a break from yeah. Minecraft. You were still doing Minecraft, just not Hermitcraft. I was still doing it, but maybe I was doing a single player thing or a, a hardcore thing or something. So I just stopped playing midway through season five, which is unfortunate because season five's base was one of my favorites that I've ever done. That was, was like season the Martian. Five again? It was like the Martian base that I made out in the Mesa, and it was like a oh, sort yeah. of spaceship Gosh. sort of thing. I really, really liked That's it. That's a cool one, yeah. And I think the last episode on that season for me was actually Mumbo coming and uh, teaching me to make an elevator or something. Mm. One that you never use. Cause you... <laughs> one, exactly. One that I never ended up using, unfortunately. Sorry, Mumbo. <laughs> so um, that was season five, and then you... I, I'm, I've, I thought I was well versed on my Minecraft or my Hermitcraft history, but I've lost all recollection of pre season seven. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So you mentioned your Martian base. Uh, what is mm. is that your favorite like base you've had in Minecraft, or what was like your number Ooh, one? My favorite, my favorite build in Minecraft definitely has to be the TCG. I oh, mean, it counts as a build. Um, that was incredible. I think that was more than base. a build. Like that's yeah, that was <laughs> that's its own category. Is <laughs> what that was. <laughs> um, my favorite base 
was probably not the Martian base because I didn't really get to finish it, yeah. but I, I loved the way it was headed. Like the concept um, stuff. I think the lily pad back in the Minecraft days, I made like a, um, I don't know if you're familiar, but I made like a floating base that was in the shape of a lily pad. It was made out of, all out of quartz. And then I had, within the lily pad, I had all kinds of different sections. There was like a, um, a, a, a villager section and then there was uh farm sections and it kind of went into the water as well i really like that base aesthetically and it was um it was really fun to build definitely bring in some bells <laughs> yeah it that was another yeah, it's been a long time <laughs> so uh i think that's probably the best way to get onto the, the tcg since that's definitely like the definitive beef build i guess and uh, so what inspired you to actually make that insane project? <laughs> like... Well, it was, um, I w so in season seven, I made the album arts and the, uh, it, what was it called? I think it was called eternal sunshine. My wallpaper that nobody bought. <laughs> it was just yellow wallpaper with white stripes, but oh, I used yeah. map. Yeah. I think that's what it was called. I used maps to make, them and then i made the album art covers in maps i think i only made seven as they were so detailed it yeah took a very very long time so i made those and then i thought to myself like there's something here like i feel like i can probably expand this to make it a little bit more special um season eight i knew it was going to be a short season yeah so and i knew the maps take me such a long time i didn't yeah. even bother doing that um in fact, in season seven, I all, I believe I also made like for sale signs out of map art and and used that yes. for a few things. Didn't, didn't they didn't you also get make much a used. mumbo? Sorry, didn't you also make a mumbo? Yes, yes, yeah, the, the I made a mumbo. Real mumbo. I made a mumbo wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was something. <laughs> yes, uh, realistic mumbo, and he loved it. Yes. Um, I was playing so after. Uh, it, 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 around season eight, I was playing on my patron server, and one of my uh, patrons showed me a book. And inside the book it was sort of like uh, text art, like you know how you can make like little, um, I don't, I'm not sure, sprites, I guess, out yeah. of text. Um, so he made that, and he's like, "Yeah, um, these are like collectibles. These are kind of like cards on our server. I'm handing them out, and you know, people are collecting them." And he asked me if I wanted one. I'm like, "Yes," but that got me thinking. The card thing would be amazing to do with the maps so right after i got off the call with them um i started thinking about it and thinking a little more deeply and then uh one thing led to another and i'm like yeah i want to make a card game for hermits because at the time i was also playing some uh pokemon online um yeah, tcg, TCG online yeah. yeah so i'm like you know what that'd be amazing if i just made a sort of a hermit craft card card game for people to uh to play on the server so that's how that idea came about, really. It was uh, somebody on my on my patron server who jogged my memory, and I was like, yes, the maps. <laughs> I could probably do something with collectibles and maps. That's actually surprising. I, I always assumed it was going to be the other way around, where you sort of thought, I want to make a card game in Minecraft. It's like, how do I do that? And you went with maps as your option, but it was the maps first. Okay. Yeah, it was the maps first. That, and then... Once you, I think it's like with Cleo. So Cleo is a master with um, the armor stance. Uh, armor stance, yeah. And she could do just like anything with armor stance. But I'm sure when she started, she didn't have any idea how far she could possibly go with the armor stance. It's the same with the maps. In season seven, I started with the simple stuff like that yellow and white wallpaper. Mm. And then I moved on to album art covers. And then I did a realistic photo of Mumbo. <clears throat> so the I didn't really progression. know. <laughs> yeah, it's what everybody does, right? Yeah. <laughs> Am I the only one? I didn't really know how far I could go with it, but once I started making them, I realized I can put pretty much anything on these maps. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. I've seen some insane like uh, like custom paintings and stuff people do on like oh yeah some servers, and it's just wild. But uh, yeah, and then if you start adding elevations and stuff when you're oh, making God, the maps, that, you can yeah. change the shades and get super super detailed. Yeah, whenever I see like a like you see the painting and think, oh, it's beautiful, and then you look at the actual map building, and like it's just yeah. staircases of like nonsense. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, how did you exactly. even like? Tempt I considered that? doing that, but I realized that that, that would, would take it, me. Yeah. I I probably wouldn't be done yet. No, you would. No, it would have been 
end of season and you would have been like halfway yeah. through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how long did it actually take? I would say, so I started in March of 2022 mm-hmm. building the maps and I didn't finish. Um, it's tough because I, I technically never finished. I kept building maps. That's like, true. Yeah. I would say I built the maps until the end of the season. Um, because I kept building maps. Uh, like a year but, and a half uh, I, of building maps. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how long it took to finish all the cards that I did because I would do two or three a week on average. Sometimes I would do more, sometimes I would do less. It depends on which map. You did 114 like, um... for the main deck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and all, all in total, I just counted them not too long ago. There were I made officially two hundred and one maps, including like the health cards and including the oh, type. God, yeah, I forgot about card. the health cards and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it was around two hundred, just about two hundred cards that I made, or two hundred maps that I made all season. So, um, yeah, I can't really answer that question other than to say I just never really stopped. I was making that... maps almost till the end. Did you go in with like an expectation of thinking, oh, this will take me like a few months, or was it like? No, I knew it was going to. You, you knew it was going to be okay. I wasn't sure if you went in like yeah. delusional. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a year long thing at right. least. It was like a and I knew commitment. that this season, yeah, and I knew that this season was going to last a lot longer than season eight. We didn't. I don't think we really knew how long, um, the season was going to last officially, um. But I knew it was going to last longer than season eight, so I figured in a year I'll have this done, and then uh, we can we can start playing for a couple weeks before the server shuts down. Yeah, you get you get two weeks of play. That's it. <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought was going to happen. Luckily, we had a lot more than that. Yes, because of all the updates, lots of stuff happened with the scheduling. But um, mm-hmm. do you ever like? Because Tango also did his own set of cards, was decked out, but mm-hmm. he used those custom models to do them yeah he was he was a lot smarter than (laughs) do you ever regret not doing that or do you think at the the maps no yeah so i knew that i could do that right Um, we'd done that in season eight like we we'd already had that sort of custom model data um pack in on the server so i totally knew i could do that but i wanted to prove that i could do it completely insert like anybody can do it yeah like if you wanted to do it on your server you can make some cards on your server and you can play on your server you don't need to have any special mod pack or not mod packs what are they called like data, uh, data packs, packs. And, like yeah. tools and stuff yeah exactly you don't need any of that stuff you can actually make it on your server and play games with your friends so that that's why i did it that way instead because yeah i totally I mean, I I mulled it over. I was like, oh, I could do. I mean, it'll be a lot easier. I think it'd be I less special if you did it that way, though. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I don't think it would have had the same impact because people uh, literally prestige, saw me. Yeah. yeah, they saw me building the this game for an entire season. Like they saw it start from start to finish, and I think that adds something to it. So the gameplay of the uh, TCG. I'm assuming that went through loads of different variations. It did, yeah. Um, in the end, I wanted... So I had different ideas to make things a little bit more complicated and complex and stuff. But in the end, I wasn't really designing this game for professional no, TCG yeah. players. I was designing for the Hermits, quite honestly. Yeah. And I thought a lot of the Hermits don't play these card games, so... I want to make it as simple and as accessible as possible because the last thing I want to do is spend a year making cards and then the game is too difficult for yeah. them to pick up and learn. So I I kind of broke down my ideas to the simplest forms and then um, along the way I've had I had test games and and we made little changes here and there but the the main idea was always that it would be a, a very ac- accessible TCG game. So anybody, if you, even if you hadn't played TCG games before in the past, you would be able to pick this one up and and sort of get the hang of it within two or three turns. Yeah, and I think I accomplished that because my wife has never played any sort of game at all, card game, um, and she has consistently beaten me every time we have <laughs> games together. So I did it. <laughs> I've actually still not played a full round of the TCG, which I think is. I, I, I waited so long to get my second deck, and then now I've mixed them together, and I need to make split them apart again. But um, oh yeah, I think what makes the TCG work so well is also how good of a spectator it like sport it is. Like mm-hmm. people watching it can understand. Yeah, 
Because the amount yeah, of times and, I've watched and... like Yu-Gi-Oh games, it's like I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> right, exactly. I recently uh, watched a couple of Lorcana games on uh, YouTube because I was curious. Because Lorcana is kind of blowing up right now. It's the Disney trading card game. Oh, is that what it's called? I've seen the I've seen the cards. Yeah. Yeah, and so I started watching, and I was really, it took me a very, very long time to sort of grasp what was happening and why it was happening. Yeah. And I still kind of am confused about some of the things here and there, but overall, I, I think I've grasped it. But I know that my game is a lot easier to sort of understand. It's very basic, um, broken down into a very easy to understand yeah. um, turns and, and rules and yeah, all that stuff very structured compared to some of the other ones where it can go very off right. the rails <laughs> yeah exactly so what are your like favorite card games in real life Ooh, favorite card games in real life i mean i do still collect the pokemon cards um i started playing actually the pokemon card game in real life when i was 18 which was a very long time ago i won't <laughs> even tell you how long ago it was yeah that's that's but it was right before <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was right before I was going heading off to university and um sort of the Pokemon craze was hitting and I thought I'd jump on it and then I I remember playing a bunch of games in my backyard with a couple of my friends. Um but other than that, I don't really play any other um trading card games other than the Hermitcraft TCG now mm. with uh with folks when I go to uh, meetups or play with my wife or something. But yeah, that that really is the only other card game that i played and that was a very long time ago is the pokemon one um you put you went to was it was it pax what was the thing you went to where you met joe and did like oh yeah it was pax unplugged PAX in unplugged, uh, philadelphia yeah i saw some uh you got to, you got to play a lot of games there with people i guess do any trading <laughs> i actually didn't get to play any games there. Oh, did you not oh no no the first day i got there i only had about one full day and then two half days to spend there so the first day i got there it was brought already late in the day so i didn't even go to the convention the first day okay the second day we i get there in the morning we had a signing in the morning so i signed a bunch of cards and then we had an, a gap an hour gap between the signing and our panel and so there wasn't really too much time i had to find my way over <laughs> to the panel yeah <laughs> and, uh, and get ready and stuff so then we did the panel and then after the panel, I was just drained, and I, I went back to the hotel room, and I just passed out and left the next day. I, I so bet. I didn't actually get to play any cards, unfortunately. Not to say. Any games, unfortunately, that day. Okay, uh, I think we should probably rewind the clock a little bit, because we've jumped from going from the brick-built games to the actual card game. Is So what was the story of making it real? Like, what happened behind the scenes? Like yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any plans at all to make no. it into a real game, but as the season progressed, people in my real life who were aware of what I was building yeah. told me that it would be a very cool card game in real life. And then the YouTube comments started coming like, yeah. I would totally buy this if this was a real thing. I need this to be a real thing. Make yeah. this a real thing. So I started looking into it a little bit more seriously. Um, and I, I, I started approach, I tried to approach Mojang because, um, yes. in the game, my cards are filled with, uh, Minecraft, Minecraft IP. Items, yeah. yeah. So I tried to approach Mojang just for permission to use it, uh, you use those items, but I couldn't get anywhere with them. Like I could not break through to anybody to get a definitive yes or a no. That's a shame. So yeah. So when I eventually decided to make it a real thing and make it happen, I had to sort of take the leap and make all new art for all the cards and i might be jumping ahead here so stop me if i am but yeah that's uh basically what i did I, I people just convinced me to sort of make it into a real thing and then i had to kind of figure out how that was going to happen and i found creo creo actually emailed me months before suggesting i make it into a real thing and they can help me with it and i kind of blew them off like yeah it's not going to happen i don't think it's going to yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just not gonna happen. So then I went back to my email and I remembered that somebody had uh, reached out and I contacted Creo and then yeah partnered up with them and made some real life cards. It's it's because I remember you messaged me and like because you messaged me like January or February ish and yeah. like you just like you just said oh i need to quickly get back to mojang it's like what the heck is this project going to be <laughs> cuz you weren't you didn't even tell me it was a tcg back then like oh it, really i don't even remember i know i messaged you on reddit correct yeah you messaged me on reddit and then yeah. 
uh, I was on a train platform about to go to London, and I, like, I just got a message saying, <laughs> hey, do you want a job? I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. But, um, so there wasn't actually that much Minecraft content. It's not as much as I thought there would be. Like, obviously you had, like, the, the player models and stuff, but in terms of Minecraft-specific items, we only changed, like, four of them. I guess except from the... Uh, oh, right. The, well, we changed the art on all of them. We changed the art on all of them, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, the art on all of them were changed, but yeah, the my, the name of the items only about yeah, only not too many of them were Minecraft like, specific because they kind of all exist in real life anyway. That's it, yeah. Um, but like the yeah, in terms of art, stuff. everything had to be changed. Yes, yeah, so that yeah, was quite a project. <laughs> the the totem of undying had to be changed. Netherite as well. Yes, magmatite. That was yeah. a, uh, and then also obviously having to do the art for all of them. So. Um, for those who haven't seen my Hermitcraft TCG making of video, go watch it. But also, um, there was four artists. There was me, uh, Lodorigo, Pillow Dash, and Ibi, and we split all the cards between us. And was did you always like? So, what was the process of like choosing the artists? I guess I just started uh, scrolling Reddit, and I found people whose art were that I was a fan of, mm. and. But not only that I was a fan of, but also looked different from each other. Yes. Because yeah. I like the idea of having different art styles uh, for the different cards. If everything, if I wanted everything to be consistent, um, then I would have just hired one person and that person would have slaved away for months. Yes. But <laughs> I decided that I wanted to have like different art styles because, again, I was inspired by the Pokemon uh, cards. Some of them are... Yeah. sort of renders and then some of them are very rudimentary drawings there's one so, that's just like clay models <laughs> exactly exactly so i kind of like that it, it adds a little fun, yeah. a little something special for every card especially if um if you have like a favorite artist too that'd be kind of cool like if yes. if somebody's collecting these cards and they're like oh my favorite cards are the ones that cc draws then they want to collect all the cc cards and then they'll all have like a, a consistent art style so um, yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. And and using community, members of the community, the yes. Hermitcraft community to make these was the best thing ever because I didn't have to explain some of no, the people just got it, yeah. Exactly. It, it actually saved me probably a whole lot of time in, in explanations. I could imagine like the, the it's it's not something that necessarily makes sense to someone who isn't completely immersed in it. <laughs> exactly. So it was uh, it was nice that I found four people who were already versed in the Hermitcraft yes. universe. I've uh, struggled to explain what it is to my family and friends. Like, they just, I just say, oh, I'm making a card game. I don't explain what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's too much to get into. <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, it was such a cool thing to work on, and we ended up going from four artists to, like, 20-something of them now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah, for the alternate art, I think a lot of the hermits decided they want to, wanted to uh, expand the artist base, especially yes. uh, and use artists, especially that they've used in the past. So yeah, yeah we uh, we ended up expanding quite a bit. I know some people specifically requested people, but then also Creo did like a artist drive almost, and just got some people who were mm -hmm. interested, and we got some really cool artists. I'm excited to see what other stuff they're working on. They ended oh, up working yeah. on like Scarland's art book and stuff too. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, that's so. I've lost myself in my list now. Where am I going? <laughs> so, um, a little bit back to the map art. I'm just curious. Would you ever make a map art again? <laughs> <laughs> like a single, a single map art? Like, are you ever going to do something map based again, or map based? I would definitely make single. Yeah. one-off map arts in the future because i i kind of enjoy it yeah it, it's sort of like um, imagine. <laughs> yeah i, I kind of zone out and i know what blocks i'm placing where because i'm looking at my other monitor um so it's okay to do every once in a while but halfway through it <laughs> you can imagine i'm i've I, after i've done like 55 60 maps yeah. and i realized that i'm only halfway through it was like oh my goodness it was a moment of like, do I really want to do this? But I yeah. just kept going. I, I just kept going, luckily. But yeah, I would definitely do uh, one-off map arts in the future. One-off so, is... One-off, yeah, that's the key word. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in terms of like future projects and stuff, are you, are you ready for season 10? 
I have been planning for season 10 for a little while. I didn't get too much of a break no. uh, between seasons because I was still doing some stuff behind the scenes, which um, I can't say. I can't go into any, into any more detail, Ooh. really. But I was doing some stuff behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, I am sort of ready for season 10. Sort of. <laughs> I, have kind of a, I have kind of a general outline of what I want to do, but I don't have any specifics yet. But I am excited for season 10. I feel like I, I, feel like I just took almost two years off of Minecraft, to be honest, That's because I wasn't, really, I wasn't really building anything. Um, uh, like, I was just placing uh, blocks on a 2D yeah. canvas, and now I get to actually, I feel like I get to play the game now. <laughs> yeah, you, you, were, you were playing paint, basically. <laughs> was... Yeah, basically, <laughs> for a year and a half. So, like, what kind of direction are you going to go with? Are you going to try and be more social, like, just chill around people, or are you going to, like, go big? Like a big base. I definitely want to be more social. That's uh, something that I've uh, I've decided that I want to do. I just don't. Uh, last season, actually, I did I did the most with other people that I've ever done in my YouTube yeah. career because it kind of demanded it. It yeah. was a game that you couldn't play by yourself, so you have to kind of do it. Um, but I definitely want to be more social first and foremost. In terms of mega builds, I don't think I have anything unless it changes. I don't think I have anything mega mega planned. No. But I have projects that I want to um finish throughout the season. Yes. Uh yeah, I can't get too much I don't want to spoil anything. Of course, got to got to keep some people uh, in, like <laughs> got to keep it Lock and key for now. <laughs> oh yeah, top secret stuff. So, in terms of like the future of like Minecraft, is there anything you really want added to the game? Well, I'll say the last year and a half has made it very clear that we need more colors yeah. added <laughs> to the game. There are many colors and shades missing from the palette that don't that that would require me to start making like the step. Uh, yeah. patterns on these maps and that's just i feel like yeah we need we need more of those there's also some colors where you can only get specific colors using like prismarine for example which mm -hmm. is very hard to attain well not yeah. very hard but it's harder than you, have, you have to put in some effort to get that <laughs> you have to put in some effort to get that stuff um so different options because i know like um for example the carpets yes the carpets you can get that same color using multiple different blocks you can do uh, concrete powder, concrete, like the, the there's all kinds of different and then full uh, wool as well, other than carpets. There's all kinds of different options for each of those colors. But in some cases, um, like, for example, the off white color that I use uh, mushroom stem blocks for. Right. I believe there's only two. There's only the mushroom stem blocks and then cobwebs. Oh, so <laughs> yeah so i would love more options for each block but I, i'm probably in the minority that i want different color yes that's uh, not top of most people's list <laughs> probably not if i was going to go for a more popular popularist approach i would say um probably more building blocks i guess I they just, just yeah blocks. so it's always nice to have more options with any like yeah. notable colors that you are missing uh there was let me think there was probably, it was hard to get a lot of the shades of uh, skin shades for some of the hermits. That's true, uh, yeah. So they would either end up a little too orange or a little too uh, very light yellow. Yeah. So there was nothing really in between. Something in between those two colors would have been, would have been great because, yeah, I, I've noticed like there was a, I think I even have an error scar card because... I oversaturated him or, or <laughs> undersaturated him or something, and he was just like a bright He's color glowing. when really his skin, <laughs> exactly, and his skin really shouldn't be that bright. No, <laughs> but it was really difficult to get the in between there. Who was the hardest hermit to actually make a card for? Like, was anyone um, that specifically stuck out as being like difficult? There was. Who was it? I think it was. Oh, a beetle jost was oh, yeah, very that's a, difficult. That's a difficult one, I can he's, imagine. <laughs> yeah, he's got a bunch. I had to make a bunch of different on-the-fly changes to his map because uh, what I was being told by the program that I was using just was not working uh, in actuality. It was just his face looked like a jumbled mess. Yeah. So I had to really kind of go back and redo that. A lot of the other hermits, too, 
sometimes the program that I used uh, suggested like a, a brown terracotta. And mm. so when I finish the map, I look at the map and I'm like, no, that that is supposed to be black. It should be a lot lighter. So I'd go in and I'd take out all the brown terracotta and put in black terracotta or black carpet, depending on uh, the shade that I needed. So um, that and there was a lot. There's a lot of hermits with black on their skin. Yes. By the way. <laughs> so was, what was the yeah, program was, you used? It was called. It's called Map Art Craft. Oh, it's uh, it's a web based thing. Right, and you didn't use any like schematics with like light matter or stuff. It was just like eyeballing no, it. no. Yeah, so um, I the the website allows you to upload an image, yeah, and then uh, I uploaded the the settings that, or I put down the settings that I wanted, um, and then yeah, it tells you which block will make that color, and then I just start placing those uh, one hundred twenty eight by one hundred twenty eight blocks. Um, I remember because I used I used that I asked what uh, eh, start that again. I asked you what program you used, and then I did my own map art for the making of video, and like it gave me some wild blocks, like bedrock and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. You have to kind of really play around with the program to select which blocks you you even want to use, and then the dithering is also something you have to worry about. The staircasing, obviously, you don't yes. want to, to staircase and stuff, but um, yeah, it's uh, it just takes some fiddling around with. But once you get something that you like then you can just work off of that and you don't have to change too much in terms of like which blocks you want to use and stuff like that. So how about we move a little bit away from Minecraft and instead go into some of your personal hobbies and stuff? Sure. Any, anything you do for fun outside of like Minecraft and YouTube and such? Um, I've had hobbies over the years. I don't really have too many right now. I think the only thing really that I do nowadays is in the spring and summertime, I do enjoy kind of just um, just fiddling with my cars. Mm -hmm. I have a couple cars. I like taking them out. I like washing them. I like driving them. I like putting them away. <laughs> that is really, this is really all I do. And I only do it about once or twice a week, usually on weekends because I'm still busy during the week with uh, YouTube stuff. Um, that's probably really the only hobby I have. I don't play any video games really outside of minecraft because it uh, you get a weird guilt feeling when you play because i think that i could be making this a recording and making it into a video yeah. why am i wasting my time just playing this I get game that for exact fun feeling who does as that? well yeah <laughs> he would ever <laughs> so have fun <laughs> yeah i know i i do play a little bit of um NBA, like I play basketball on my Xbox every once in a while. I, I don't even remember the last time I actually played a game, but that really is all that I do these days. In the wintertime, I busy myself with, you know, snow blowing my driveway and um, warding off the cold and salting my walkway to my house. That's, really, that's my hobby. Is that's more chores than hobby. <laughs> that, I, that, that is basically the extent of my hobbies right now, though. That's, <laughs> that's all I pretty much do all winter long. So am I right in saying that you live on a farm? Like yeah, it's a little, good. I wouldn't say it's a farm farm, because we don't grow any crops no. or anything like that, but we have, it's a hobby farm, I'll say, because we have... You have animals, uh, don't we you? Have, yeah, we have three donkeys, and we have four goats and a couple dogs, and that's about it right now. I remember once you just, like, mentioned, hey, we uh, in, like, the TCG chat, you mentioned, oh, I we had a new goat this week. I was like, where'd you get a goat from? I didn't realize you'd lived. <laughs> yeah. So I you... know. I always forget that a lot of people probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So it's probably funny when I have to say like, Oh, I got to run out and feed my donkeys real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Gave birth to a new goat yesterday. What? <laughs> it was a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. It was a oh, donkey. donkey. Oh, yeah, a donkey. Yeah. yeah. It was a little baby donkey. We have a mom, a dad and a little baby, a little family. <laughs> <laughs> so are you like a big animal person? I love animals. I've, yeah, I've loved animals my entire life. Uh, not to sound weird, but I think I prefer the company of animals to people most of the no, time. No, I can definitely <laughs> test to that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I uh, even when I've done fundraising, I've done some stuff. I've done some charity work for mental health, but I've also done a lot of charity work for animal shelters and stuff. Mm. So I try to do as much for animals as I possibly can. And if it was up to me, I'd probably have 
a lot more. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I think my wife kind of keeps me in check. We have a couple barn cats now too that just kind of started appearing in our barn, and so we've been feeding them. So oh, they're so technically they're just, yeah. ours now. <laughs> They've adopted you, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I remember one of the first like big series I watched of yours was a building a zoo series in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I see you've done like a lot of like modded and a lot of like spin off series like adventure maps and stuff. Is that like yeah. rather than doing other games, you play games inside of Minecraft? <laughs> yeah, I I I just really enjoy Minecraft. Yes. In, in... <laughs> in its entirety like and and then when you can add mods to it like i've always wanted more animals in the game actually going back to that question earlier the future of minecraft be great if there was just more animals yes. period just like get us some more animals and more variety like why do we only have one type of dog give us yeah. different types of dogs and yeah, wolves and breeds, stuff. Yeah. yeah so um yeah i've always enjoyed minecraft obviously for, for the last 13 years i've enjoyed minecraft but when you add things to the game via mods that I've always wanted in the game, it makes it even more fun. So the reason I played like the zoo mod is just because I love animals. So I want to go out there and find some animals and see them and bring them home and breed them and trade them. Um, it's something that uh, is still running to this day on my uh, Omega Minecraft server. We have like a zoo um, uh, server within that Omega Minecraft network. So you can play there and you can do whatever you want with animals and stuff and, and just have fun with them. And then the uh, Life in the Woods mm. was the other one that was like probably my favorite mod pack. It was made by Fedrin, mm. uh, who is, I believe, officially a mind crack friend. Uh, <laughs> so Fedrin Legally made this mind mod pack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fedrin made this mod pack years and years ago and I played it and I just loved the exploration aspect of it. Yeah. It's my two favorite things to do in Minecraft is the exploration and the animal stuff. Yes. Like it's just it's a lot of fun. I'm not really much into like the mechanical yeah. mod packs where you got to build this to build that to build that to yeah, get that. Yeah, like tech tree I'm sort not of stuff. A huge fan. Yeah. Um, so Vault Hunters was a little like that, but the thing about Vault Hunters is the vaults were my yes. favorite because you could just go into the vaults and you can just get loot and kill monsters and you had a timer and it was great. Loved Vault Hunters. Um, but yeah, stuff like um, exploration and adding more animals, like those mod packs just make it possible for Minecraft to just live on even longer in, in this yeah. little head of mine. That's definitely the direction that the game seems to be going in as well. There's a lot of new exploration stuff in the mm -hmm. next updates. What's your yeah, it's so much fun? What's your favorite animal then? Like in animal? Minecraft or in real life? Both. <laughs> in Minecraft, probably. That's a good question. I'd say the cats. I love cats in general. Cats are um, good. Re real life. In game. Cats are awesome. I love cats. I used to be a dog person until I got a cat. Yes. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, I think I'm a cat person. I was the same. I used to be a dog person until I got a cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's they're they're awesome little creatures. Um and at the I don't want to repeat myself in real life. So if I if I had to pick something other than a cat. Yeah, well, what's your second favorite animal if it's not a cat? <laughs> I would love, I mean, I love all our farm animals, mini mini donkeys is what we have, by the way. Not even regular donkeys. We have mini donkeys. Mini they're donkeys. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're tiny little donkeys. They're adorable. But I want to go. I want to go into like the Canadian wilderness, and I want to pick like a bear. A bear. Probably. I love bears. Probably grizzly bears because they yeah. look big and cuddly, but they're fast and ferocious. Yes. And I just, uh, yeah, they just. They look like they'd be a good them. like just cuddle, but. You don't want to get anywhere exactly. near them. <laughs> exactly. And I like to imagine that's what I'm like. <laughs> I, can't imagine, like... I can't really imagine you being ferocious like a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that part. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, right now I'm just filling in the padding and the fur, and then <laughs> afterwards we'll work on the ferociousness. You do often go to the river and catch salmon, though. That's oh, all, With your, with your bare hands. Oh, talking about cats. Oh, hello. nicely done. Bare hands. Oh, that was good. <laughs> also talking about cats, my cat just bolted across my table and knocked a bunch of stuff over. So that's cool. <laughs> Thank oh, you, yeah. Sumi. <laughs> you knew we were talking about it. Oh yeah, she heard. She, I think she makes a cameo in every one of my videos now because oh, it's nice. causing problems. <laughs> yeah. But um, so 
Uh, well, we talk grizzly bears. That was it. Grizzly bears. <laughs> Grizzlies. Yeah, love them. I, I do like I do like bears. I'm a. I just like animals as well. Like I like fluffy. I like the I like the weird, stupid ones. Like the ones that like you wouldn't be able to come up with yourself. Like stuff like giraffes is just very silly. Like if it's just a long horse. It's my wife's favorite animal. Actually. Giraffes are good. Uh, yeah. I like flamingos right now. They're my thing. Um, mm-hmm. And hedgehogs. Hedgehogs, sure. Yeah, that's a wide variety. It's a wide. <laughs> I, I just, I just kind of like weird. The the weirder yeah. ones. <laughs> like cats are almost sloths. Sloths are good. Yeah, uh, sloths are cool. I think eye eyes are funny. The ones with a really long finger. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just some such strange animals out there. But, um, yeah. So the mob vote recently had the like, pick of three animals. Which one did you mm-hmm. go for? Um, I went for not the armadillo. Not the armadillo. So it was armadillo, crab, and penguin. It was the penguin, I believe. I picked. Yes. Did you pick yes, that I because it's I a penguin? penguin, or because it had the boat <laughs> stuff, or was it just because it's a penguin? <laughs> I think I picked it because it's a penguin. Yeah, fair um, enough. <laughs> I mean, I like armadillos too, but how cool would it be? I feel like the uh, the the colder biomes don't have much happening in them, other yeah, it's than just like polar bears, polar bears, and foxes. And yeah, rare. so I feel like you know, adding a, a little penguin would would round out that biome nicely. Well, it was the um, rock hopper penguin that lives in like warmer climates, which I thought was yes. interesting. Yeah. Uh oh, what are they called? There's another penguin too that I really like. Emperor penguins, yes, they're Emperor. awesome. I love. Them. They look really, really cool. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad about the armadillo. I know no. a lot of people were kind of mad about it, but I feel like that'll be kind of a cool thing if you can armor your dog and stuff. Now, the yes. only thing we need is different dog it, yeah, skins. Add more dog breeds. I think that'd be great. I played like a yeah. dog taming mod, which let you like just change the breed of the dog, and I got to be like a cool husky or a pug. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just with how many types of dogs there are. It's weird that there's not in Minecraft. <laughs> I know, and it's it's funny because they're wolves technically. Yeah, they're not actually dogs. Then, yeah, then you tame them, then they become dogs. But back in the day, before they added cats the to the ocelots. game, it yeah. was the ocelot, and then they would change to a cat. So why can't we do that for the wolf? Yeah, I think it would be because like the ocelots are now just useless in the game. They don't do anything except from That's just true. chill. <laughs> Yeah, li- I mean, I'm not complaining though. The more animals, yeah, like the better. Them. Even if they don't do anything, I like just having them for ambience. I think birds would be great. Birds would be good. I like. I want, I want some more bugs in the game, like butterflies and yeah. sort of stuff. Because right, right, right now we've just got bees and spiders. Which, That's uh, true, and giant spiders too. <laughs> and big bees, but they're quite big. <laughs> <laughs> the bees are big. The, the too, massive actually, size of your head. Big. Imagine a bee the size of your head. <laughs> I know that'd be frightening. That should be quite a good pillow though. It's very fluffy. <laughs> Except for the stinger. Oh, uh, just yeah, just put that. Put like a sock on it. <laughs> <laughs> put a sock on the stinger. <laughs> okay, actually, I've got one question here that my mum specifically asked me to ask. Oh, because okay. my mum's a big uh, Hermitcraft uh, fan. She's she watches everyone more than I do. Well, and hello, Cece's mom. She's, she's, she's called JC. <laughs> JC? <laughs> hello, JC. <laughs> so, um, yes, she asked, she's, she gave me a list of questions. I've asked most of them, but the one I haven't asked is what's your opinion on garden gnomes? <laughs> I My don't favorite like, animal. <laughs> I do not like garden you gnomes. You do not like them? I, I hope JC doesn't like garden gnomes either. I have a feeling that JC probably does. He does, yes. <laughs> I knew it. I I like a nice clean aesthetic and that yeah. goes for gardens as well. I spend a lot of time outside like mowing the lawn and like mm. doing just outdoor stuff when when the weather is nice here. I'm looking out my window right now and you would not want to see what I'm looking at right now. It's just <laughs> snow coming down. It's disgusting. But anyway, winter time when it gets nice and warm, I like to go outside. I love it when the garden is nicely uh weeded and things are nice and clean and neat and tidy and I feel like garden gnomes just add a little bit of that not yeah, it's I feel a bit like they don't clutter. belong there. I think it's yeah, I think a they're bit. funny. I think that's what makes they them are so good funny. is that they're just so silly. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you have like if you have like a little garden gnome collection somewhere and you keep it contained, <laughs> yeah. you make a little garden gnome village, I think that's okay. That's, but if they're fun. all over the place, then I don't know if I can if I can be on board I with that. I think you should just like move them around as if they're like <laughs> doing Oh like... yeah, like like they're the elf on the shelf. <laughs> the gnome in the home. <laughs> <laughs> the gnome in the home. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 
Okay, well, she's going to be disappointed that you don't like gnomes, but it's not like we I'm even have any gnomes. Tasty. I don't even know where the gnomes, like, come from, because we don't have any. <laughs> you don't have any, but she just loves them. She just likes them. She likes the idea of them, I think. Oh, there's also one more, actually, and what was, what superpower do you have? Um, oh, what superpower do I have? Do you I have? would say... <laughs> I would say I have the I have I have a I have the uncanny ability to place blocks for a year and a half and not go insane. A man of sheer focus. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what it was. That's what it was. Focus. That's my uh, superpower. Focus. <laughs> what power would you like to have, though? Oh, can we get crazy here? You can go whatever you want. I would love to fly. fly. Flying would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody, it's probably a boring answer. Everybody probably says fly or invisibility or something, mm. but I would love to fly. Like, if I could get, if I didn't have to get on a plane to go visit that, people yeah. <laughs> and just fly, that would be awesome. Or teleportation, that'd be even Teleportation would be good. That, yeah. Yeah. My issue is that I've got nowhere to go, so I probably want something that, like, I, I think the power I need is the ability to search for anything. And, like, if I could just figure out where I've left something. Like, oh, I see. Yeah. I, I am so forgetful and I lose things all the time. So if I had the power to just sort of say, where is my phone? And it would just like flash. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. As I get older, I'm finding I might need that power as well. I'm, I'm, I've been doing it since I was 14. So I'm I'm so, I'm screwed later. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> um, So I think we've run out of like specific questions that I have like prepared now. But I do have a couple that I think would be interesting for people who are watching. And that is, have you got any tips for people who are starting, like, making Minecraft content and stuff? What would, what's your Absolutely. biggest tips? Uh, number one, it's going to be difficult. Yes. So if you go a long time without having any views or subscribers on your videos or your channel, it's fine. It's normal. It's going to happen. You just have to keep being persistent. If you're doing this for a living, then you might as well not even start because it's it's yeah. very, very difficult. To you do can't do it for the money. That's, yeah, you can't. If you're doing it as a hobby or for the love of it, then 100% do it and something might come from that. Yes. You might catch somebody's eye, some people's eye. A video might get super popular and then maybe you can do it for a living, but don't go into it wanting to do it for a living at the at this point in time in 2024 yeah. it would be very very difficult and you'd probably yeah. be disappointed it gets harder and harder each year as more competition and like yeah yeah it's high just, production <clears throat> values and stuff I, I wonder how many minecraft channels are out there now it's there's yeah. probably mi more minecraft channels now than there were channels total when i first started oh absolutely like the, the number is ridiculous now if you just type in Minecraft, the amount of channels you see that like I've never even heard of is like yeah, I know it's incredible, know. and somehow they have like millions of views. And yeah, I've never like, even heard who these people are. Yeah, where where, where are these people? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, like there's a there's, there's a lot of like meta, I guess, when it comes to making videos and stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. do you at all pay attention to that stuff or no, not really. I every once in a while I'll try something, but. Honestly, it's impossible to predict what works, what doesn't. Yeah. Um, I just make the videos that I think would be fun to watch, and hopefully people think they're fun to watch. I think that's the, the best way of doing anything, really, is just do it for yourself. Yeah, and that. Just... Yeah, that's the perfect tip for somebody starting. Just don't do it for anybody else. Do it for yeah. yourself, and hopefully you enjoy it. There's, there's 8 billion people in the world. Someone else is probably interested, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe two. Maybe two people. Yeah, right? it, it, maybe three if you're stretching it. It's, there you go. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a daunting thing to get into if you just think of it in terms of numbers and views and stuff. Yeah, you can't get into it thinking of that stuff. No. But, um... Any other, like, tips, like, maybe that's less Minecraft-specific or maybe more Minecraft-specific? I could say consistency, I think, was key. Um, when I first started, everybody who was following me knew exactly what days and what times videos are going to be uploaded. Nowadays, uh, I don't really follow that. Although that is something I want to change with yeah. uh, Season 10 of Hermitcraft. I want to start being more consistent, like down to the time of day that the video is going to be out yeah. on a regular basis. But I think consistency is very important because your viewers are just going to be... If they know when a video is coming out, 
then it doesn't matter what the algorithm gives them. They'll yeah. go to YouTube searching for that video because they know there's one waiting for them. Yeah. Uh, if they don't know, then they just, when they pop on YouTube, they will watch whatever gets fed to them from yeah. the magical YouTube algorithm. Whatever so. is happening beneath the hood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so yeah, consistency. I that Definitely. is something that's pretty hard to get into, especially when it comes to like creativity. Mm-hmm. Like trying to come up with brand new ideas constantly is. Yeah, you got to plan way ahead if that's something that you're um yeah. you're planning on doing. You got to plan two, three, four videos ahead of time so that you are guaranteed to make sure that your video is up at the same time on that same day. And any tips for just like playing Minecraft? Like any like good practices. <laughs> good don't dig down don't obviously. dig down obviously yes <laughs> uh always put your torches on the right side of you going into a cave so you can follow the torches on your left side coming out of the cave that's just good caving advice in general that's just good caving yep <laughs> um building should be fun yes don't try to build the biggest coolest thing you've ever seen and then get burnt out halfway through your build build something small that you think it looks must, good uh, pace yourself with it yeah and, and just build build what you think looks nice and don't don't try to build like i'm not going to build i don't want to build a castle because people people want to see a castle build you know a bakery because you want to build a bakery everyone wants a bakery <laughs> who, who doesn't want a bakery i know everybody kind of that's a bad example everybody wants a bakery. <laughs> i think it's a fun, yeah build what you want i think it's fun to like do micro projects that kind of add up to a big project like yes um I think some of my favorite projects have been sort of like when I build villages. I yes, had a jungle village in villages. Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I love building like because you can see your project progress because you're building it in sections, right? I'm building one house, then I'm building another house, then I'm maybe I'm building a schoolhouse, then I'm build but but as you're building it, you're seeing it get completed as opposed to building one giant thing. You're not really seeing anything completed until you're absolutely finished. And sometimes getting to that finished point is just a real grind. Yeah. And even then, like, there's no necessarily finishing point. Sometimes when it comes to a village, it's just as big as you keep you going. Keep Once you yeah, stop, you're true. finished, essentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's just generally good advice. Is pace yourself. Don't, like, break things down into smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier for you. <laughs> Totally. I think for the final question, let's do something fun. And what is your favorite Hermitcraft moment ever? You don't, you don't have to be involved. It just be anything in general. Favorite Hermitcraft moment. There's been a lot of moments. Yes, I can imagine. I'll tell, you know what? Actually, we, we spoke about this. We touched on it a little bit earlier. The, so... I had been working so that mumbo um <laughs> portrait. <laughs> the mumbo the portrait, mumbo yes. portrait for me. There's been tons of um Hermitcraft moments throughout Hermitcraft's history, but season seven was kind of like my comeback into Hermitcraft season since being away for a couple seasons. And so I was trying really hard to sort of impress all the other hermits and kind of feel like I fit in. Um and so when I made that, I made it completely secretively. Nobody had any idea I was making that thing at all. None Why of the did hermits. you make it? Like, what was the like? As a joke, <laughs> just I just wanted joke. to. Just I funny. wanted to sell it as like the best wallpaper ever, <laughs> and so I want people to buy mumbo and just stick them on their wall. <laughs> and so I just decided to make a mumbo wallpaper. And so I made it, and the reveal was i think it was right after we had like a hermit craft meeting mm. um and then i was like hey uh does anybody want to come over and check out this new wallpaper i just made and mumbo definitely had to be there yes. and so luckily he was <laughs> and when i revealed it the genuine shock and um the laughter that came out of the hermits i think was just something that made me feel it's like it made me video. feel like a mission accomplished like I did it. I made these people laugh. <laughs> that's, that's all you want, and, <laughs> and that's all I really wanted from that. Even if the it didn't sell at all, I didn't. I didn't really care. I just wanted to make them laugh. I think that was probably my favorite moment so far. It's also just oh, like a funny. I, thing I will to say have. actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just buy mumbo and stick them on their walls. Great. Um, but I'll say also that another moment that just came to mind was the was day one or two of when I opened up my TCG shop yes. where all the hermits were in there buying and selling or it's buying and trading cards. And it was just 
crazy with the voice mod like we couldn't even understand each <laughs> yeah. other that was also an incredible moment for me like really special the absolute chaos of those first few weeks was amazing yeah it was insanity i loved it it was the tcg was like it really like revitalized a lot of the because a lot of people came back as well like yeah there was a few hermits that came back just to play the tcg wells came back hypno came back i think like mm-hmm it was a very. It also like it came out just after the crossover event, didn't it? Yes. Like, it was just you uh, and XB who were left behind. <laughs> the <crossover>. Yeah, and <laughs> and I wanted to do the crossover event because there's people on Empires that I've played with in the past and that I really enjoy their content and stuff. I was looking forward to it, and then I realized I can't take two weeks off of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks is like 10 maps, probably, in some cases. I can't. That, that, that's just going to set me back even further. So I just stayed behind and worked on my maps. At least the people came over onto the Hermitcraft server, so you got to uh, hang out with a bunch of them there. I didn't even have the chance to. Oh, that's a shame. I, I think I, I don't even... I think maybe I was away for that. If that was in the summertime, I might have been away for that. I can't remember. It's been so long now. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it was a long season. It was a lot One of, of the stuff. longest. I think it was the longest season, if it I'm was not mistaken. By far the longest. I think it was almost two years it lasted. Yeah. And like, there's stuff like, I, cause I, I downloaded the world and I had a look at some of the things. I was like, I forgot that even happened this season. <laughs> I know. I know, right? <laughs> some, like, not only did TCG happen, but Decked Out 2 happened. Decked Out well 2. The there was the King Ren story, the crossover. Mm-hmm, the crossover. There was the Easter egg hunt. That was. That's right. Yeah. I, <laughs> I forgot about that entirely. It's wild wild season i'm like season 10 is gonna be interesting to go into i'm imagining it's gonna yeah. be a bit smaller scale <laughs> lower your expectations everyone yeah i think it's gonna be a bit of a smaller scale one just <laughs> i hope so i hope it's a smaller scale one <laughs> not building 200 and something maps again <laughs> definitely not maybe one maybe one it's just for funsies <laughs> exactly for memories <laughs> So I think that is probably a good place to end it. So is there anything you would like to say before we sign off? Yeah, I would like, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you. Thank you. And the other artists that worked on the TCG. You guys were, I could not have asked for better artists to work on the game. It was just awesome. You guys kind of like were self uh motivated and self-directed and you kind of worked out between each other who would do what so it was amazing because i was dreading having to like pick <laughs> specific cards for for the artists to draw um yeah. so i want to thank you guys you guys did awesome i want to thank everybody who's watching who has also purchased it, or even just watched tcg yes. on my channel it it's been an incredible project i never thought i thought i was just building a card game for 26 hermits and now there's i mean uh, i think we're closing in on if we haven't even surpassed like two million cards in circulation after this last booster yeah, it sale was a million so, after the first print wasn't it yeah yeah i think it was all over it was like a million and a half or something like jesus that. <laughs> and now yeah there's now there's a bunch more out there so it's insane Same to numbers. think that something yeah. that i started for 26 hermits is now turned into like a a crazy game that people can play in their homes so thank you all for for that really appreciate it <laughs> and so obviously i don't think i really need to ask this but where can people find you <laughs> uh, youtube.com slash vintage beef that is where you can find me and all of my uh hermit craft adventures you do any other socials or is it just YouTube? Uh, I have a, I mean, I have Vintage Beef LP on um, Twitter and then Vintage Beef YT on Instagram. Uh, if you're interested in more personal life sort of stuff, you can probably follow me on both of those. But if you're just interested in videos, the YouTube is probably good enough. Yes. I think I even have a, a, a YouTube or a, a Vintage Beef Facebook page, but I don't use that at all. God, yeah, I've, I, I don't even know <laughs> so, what's happening over there. <laughs> I know. So, hey, feel free to go over there and uh, and subscribe or follow. I don't even know what the proper terminology is for it. But uh, book? Yeah, I've got one of those too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I had our little guys just having a little conversation. And keep an eye out for season 10 coming soon-ish, I'd assume. Soon, I don't know. trademark. Soon, TM, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, subscribe to me on YouTube, too. Bye.